Hi, we're delighted to have you joining us today. I'm Wes Grant, Director of Technology. I'm Anna Baldwin, Director of eLearning and Integration. Wes and I would like to take you on a journey through the past, present, and future. So sit back and relax as we explore Anderson 5's journey in learning and leading with technology. While we do want to focus obviously more on our future vision of learning and leading with technology, we did want to take this opportunity to take a, take a moment and reflect back on recent years to show you how we've arrived where we are today to springboard ourselves and particularly springboard our 21st century learners into a 21st century learning environment. And we're going to look at primarily uh, the last 16 years briefly to show you how we've been focusing on doing two things. One being increasing access for everybody involved, whether it's uh, numbers of devices available to students and staff, or increasing our numbers of digitally enabled classrooms with smart boards, projectors, uh, digitally engaging devices for our kids to use. So you're going to see, I think, as we reflect back on the last 16 years, our efforts has been very clear to improve access and then secondly to increase the number of digitally engaging classrooms. You can see the trend has been to provide more access and that quest for access is continuing to grow in the device to person ratio while also we're continuing to increase our digitally enga en engaging classrooms and growing in the area of mobile computing. So as we reflect back, let's look back at 1996. That's the year that we wired our schools, wired our classrooms to allow computers to access internet resources. Um, that's the year that we gave all of our teachers laptops. And it's truly that year that our district really began the quest uh, to access internet resources um, and begin to leverage those same resources. Our students were able to, our staff, our teachers, uh, those people involved were able to truly begin accessing those internet resources as we begin that, that quest for access. Fast forward eight years to 2004 and we're continuing to expand access with more computer labs, more devices to give, give our users the opportunity to have access to devices to give them access to those digital resources, whether it be on the internet or digital content elsewhere. But it's also that same year in 2004 that we truly start creating those digitally engaging classrooms by installing and using smart boards, projectors, document cameras, things of that nature to truly begin leveraging internet content, bringing those digital resources from around the world directly into our classrooms in, uh, in that particular year. Moving forward to 2005, you can see we're continuing to expand access and as we begin to leverage and use more of the internet content from around the world uh, available to us on the internet, it also requires faster speeds to be available and we're upgrading our speeds at this particular year from 6 megabits per second to 12. We renew our web presence, we refresh that to be more engaging and fresh. And then also it's this year in 2005 that we introduced student email uh, for our students at that time. As I mentioned a moment ago, we're continuing our efforts in, in expanding access and also increasing our numbers of digitally engaging classrooms. But notice here in 2006 in the picture, you can see that we're beginning to venture into the area of mobility. And it's at that year that we, we really begin leveraging the mobile access um, through mobile laptops, things of that nature. But it's, it's the mobility uh, access that really begins to take shape in our district in 2006. Fast forward one year to 2007, and this picture here of a major interstate highway is really indicative of what we were seeing on our network and how, how it was being strained with the resources that, that were necessary and needed by our users. Um, we were having more devices, more traffic on the internet as we were beginning to really use more web 2.0 tools, blogging, uh, wikis. Uh, at that time we realized that, that we needed, as we were evaluating our network speeds and its use, it was at that time that we realized we needed to seek upgrading our speeds there as well, and we did. Um, at that time, we went from 12 megabits per second to 20 megabits per second um, in the year of 2007 to give our users faster speeds to the internet um, to make 
internet resources more readily available as we're continuing to expand access. Notice here in the picture in 2008, you see pictures of mobile devices and wireless networks, and it's in this year that we are really beginning to build out wireless networks to accommodate growing mobile computing trends. Here in 2009, we're continuing our quest for more access and creating more digitally engaging classrooms, but it's also in this year that we introduce a web-based student information system, and it was in that year we asked the State Department to allow our district um, to go first in the first implementation phases of PowerSchool because we recognized the value and the benefits to having a web-based student information system to give teachers, faculty, and administrators access to the student-related data from anywhere at any time, but also, as indicated in the picture here, uh, parents, perhaps from home or some internet connection, they could celebrate in, in potential grades that, that might be obtained or um, whether it be through assignments or quizzes, but give them more access from home. Uh, and it was in this year that we were able to do that, give community members, parents, access to our student information system um, as well as the students and, and faculty themselves. Here in 2010, we're continuing the same initiatives of expanding access and creating additional digitally engaging classrooms, but we're also creating more wireless overlays around our district as we position ourselves to truly begin taking advantage of mobile computing. In 2011, you can see the picture here of school construction uh, being indicative of us expanding our access opportunities and digitally engaging classrooms into our two new middle schools at that time, our eight renovated schools at that time. We were able to expand the access and, and digitally engaging classrooms in those areas that particular year. And with that expanded access, it, it gave us another opportunity to reevaluate and reassess our internet speeds at that time. And we upgraded to 150 megabits per second. And at that time, we were the third fastest in the state of South Carolina, only to be slower than Greenville County and Charleston County school districts. Here in 2012, it's a great year for technology. We're expanding. Um, technology at North Point. We're expanding technology at our charter school that's starting this school year. But also we are enhancing our communication capabilities with the district subscription of School Messenger giving us more opportunities to to reach our community members um, and, and communicate more effectively to them hopefully with the use of the School Messenger system. Um, but also we're able to refresh all teacher laptops this year if, if a teacher uh, does not have a new laptop already from last school year, we're going to be able to refresh them this year. Um, but also, we're updating 37 computer labs around our district as we begin to refresh those, preparing for online Common Core assessments coming in a couple of years. Uh, inter we're introducing online collaboration systems through the use of Gaggle uh, this year. As we continue to expand in the same areas we've been focusing in, in access and digitally engaging classrooms, uh, a great year for technology here in 2012. So let's take a moment and just look at where we are as of the state of things in 2012. 75% of our schools have some sort of video surveillance installed, helping to make our schools safer. 100% of our schools have an electronic visitor management system helping to make our schools safer. We've increased our speed several times in recent years to accommodate growing computing trends. Our web presence is fresh and engaging with a new look here in 2012. Um, thankfully to our faculty, our, our staff, we have great classroom web pages. We have uh, fresh school websites, district sites, and that's a, that's a testament to the efforts involved of those people there, and we, we're appreciative of those efforts. Our curriculum's online. Our student information system is informative for both staff, uh, faculty, while also informative for students and parents. In terms of learning with technology in our instructional areas, 80% of our classrooms have interactive whiteboards and or projectors of some sort. 100% of our schools have wireless capabilities really preparing to springboard us into that mobile computing era of learning. Our, our labs in terms of mobile, 
types of devices, fixed computer labs, those numbers of devices have more than doubled, giving us substantial amount of more access opportunities in our school district. To recap where we are, we've, we've made our schools safer through video surveillance, electronic visitor management, um, we've, we've offered faster speeds to access internet resources, digital content. Our web presence is continuously being updated by all parties involved. Our classrooms are more engaging. Our numbers of devices available to students and staff have increased substantially, giving everyone involved more opportunities to access digital content and internet resources. We're creating more opportunities of collaboration so that we can collaborate not just within our school buildings but also outside of our school buildings and we're enhancing our communications capabilities through additional tools as we're introducing School Messenger this year. In the last eight years we've spent 22 million dollars enhancing technology in our school district and I think that's important to note particularly because we went through the Great Recession during this same time and, and it's important to note we did not lose sight of our vision and we were able to continue progressing technology in our district and our classrooms even during that difficult financial time. While it's important to look at our past, let's take an opportunity here and look to the future and what the trends might be as we look forward. The future is going to be to continue our quest for more access, faster access, and mobile access. We also realize in the information age that it can be information overload and we need to build systems and that aggregate information for our users that, that present them with quick access to information that's meaningful, relevant, and, and, and easily accessible to them. We need to continue our progression towards web and cloud-based computing to give our users the opportunity to access information from anywhere. We need to continue to expand upon the collaboration systems. We must also teach our children to be good digital citizens. Certainly as we venture into bring your own technology piloting opportunities. We need to continue expanding our digitally engaging classrooms and we're doing that this year with our technology allocations. We're asking all schools to continue expanding digitally engaging classrooms if they're not already at 100%. We need to expand our virtualization opportunities to improve efficiencies. And then also as a technology department, we have to change our focus. Instead of thinking of supporting devices, we need to be of the mindset and create systems that manage the user's experience rather than the user's device. In the rapid development process, uh, these manufacturers are rapidly developing devices that we may or may not have planned for um, in years past, so we need to be positioning ourselves to support whatever devices might be coming to be used to not just manage the device, but manage and present the user with a positive experience. The point of this slide that I just wanted to mention is that students, teachers, staff, and parents are at the center of all that we do as we seek to improve and make enhancements it's these folks, students, teachers, staff, and parents, that we always keep in mind as we, try, as we strive to improve. But I think you can see our efforts from the past to the present have been to continually to provide more access to relevant educational information while also increasing the, the numbers of digitally engaging classrooms. And as we begin to look at the future trends, I think we can all agree that mobile computing is changing the game and how content can and is being delivered. And we've positioned ourselves to take our next step in that mobile learning experience, assisting our 21st century learners. As we look back on the past and see how much technology has changed, we can see the ENIAC, the first operational electronic digital computer developed for the U.S. Army. It used 18,000 vacuum tubes, weighed 30 tons and took up 1,800 square feet. It could perform 5,000 additions, 357 multiplications, or 38 divisions in one second. The next image is an image of an IBM 701 computer. It could perform more than 16,000 addition or subtraction operations in a second. Finally, we come to a computer that most of us carry in our pockets, the cell phone.
We use the cell phone to connect to the internet, run programs, and organize our lives. Our journey takes us to the 21st century learner. As educators, we must challenge our students with increased rigor and personalized academic experiences integrating the four C's, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. What better way to personalize our students' learning experiences than with a personally owned device? As these devices become more ubiquitous, our students can be actively involved in the curriculum and have access to current information to solve authentic problems. Recently, I read an article from the Washington Post about the 991 principle. It stated that 90% of us are the audience of the internet. 9% of us are editors of information from the internet, but only 1% of us actually create information to post to the internet. We want to move our students from being consumers of information on the internet to being producers of knowledge. To do this, we need to look at Bloom's taxonomy in a digital way. All of these tools listed here are available on the web. We need to model the use of these tools and give our students opportunities to use these tools so they can become producers of knowledge. This is a smartphone. It's very smart. This is a tablet. It's really bright. That's what technology does. It makes things smart and bright. Smart. Smart. Bright. When you connect them to the internet, they bring you knowledge. We need to shift our thinking from acquiring knowledge from the internet to how can we use these mobile devices to produce knowledge. So as we think about our initial steps in leveraging these smartphones and devices, I think it's important that we monitor and improve our network readiness to support these initiatives and as establishing a, a BYOT committee to begin exploring um, piloting the use of bring your own technology um, and how it can be leveraged in the classroom. We've already seen benefits of other school districts who are leveraging one-to-one -one initiatives or bring your own technology initiatives and as a district we're looking at bring, bring your own technology first uh, given that it's less costly um, and we can begin immediately leveraging tools already in the hands of our children. Laptops, iPads, smartphones, we use those devices every day, and kids in school are no exception. KOMUH Lindsay Cooper filed this report a few weeks ago showing us how one district is embracing ever-changing technology. You won't see many cell phones in the halls of Owensville High School now, but come 2012, every student will be able to bring his or her own device. Bring Your Own Device, or BYOD, is the school's new policy set to begin next semester. BYOD allows students to bring personal devices capable of utilizing the Internet for educational purposes. Superintendent Russ Brock says this is the language students use to communicate, so it was necessary for the district to make a change. You know, the devices are things that they uh, have become so accustomed to using that to say, okay, when you're in school, you're not going to use it just doesn't make that much sense and teachers feel the same way. Every classroom at Owensville High School is equipped with a smart board and Tim Nagel says he uses it daily. But along with the World Wide Web comes the freedom of social media sites like Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter. However, Nagel says the students who want to learn will pay attention. They know what they need to get accomplished in order to get through the class so yeah if they want to pay attention they're gonna pay attention but it's my job to try to keep them on task and provide them with learning activities that they can use the computers but they're using their time productively and staying busy instead of having all that downtime to mess around on the wireless devices. Most students are excited about BYOD. I've actually always kind of wanted to bring my laptop to school. I mean, we use them anyway. We use our own laptops, so it'd be kind of, it'll be cool. But some are worried the school simply isn't ready. It can kind of teach students who are going to be using this stuff for the rest of their lives, you know, how to use it. But by the same token, you know, like I said, we just don't have what we need to do this yet. So what are some of the cons? A theft. Of somebody else's device, obviously, um, and every school has those trouble kids that you know are just going to find some way to cause a problem. And there might be some technical problems too. We increase the bandwidth, but we we have no way to know if it's going to be enough. You know, so that we may hit a point where you know that we might have too many devices, and we might have to increase again uh, to be able to support all those. That's our big fear. 
And what about students without their own personal devices? I do worry about some of his friends that don't have a smartphone, laptop, you know, any of that, but we're trying to make accommodations, the school district is, so those kids with lower income can have opportunity to have some kind of device. Brock says the district has enough laptops to supplement those students without, but some may ask why the district doesn't provide a laptop to every student. The answer is simple, cost. The reason we wanted to go with a bring your own device opportunity was because that lessens the expense on the part of the school district. Now we're not having to invest as much money into the devices themselves because students have those devices. And parents say purchasing devices for their kids is nothing new. As parents we're starting to get used to that, you know, their iPods out of date, they're, you know, they're always wanting the new and latest trends. Brock says the Gasconade County District certainly isn't the first to implement a program like Bring Your Own Device, and he doesn't expect it to be the last. Lindsay Cooper, KMU8 News, Owensville. The new media consortium Horizon reported that more than 1.2 billion new mobile devices are produced each year. 80% of people access the internet from a mobile device. The mobile device is a specialized computer for the palm of your hand. For every baby born, 30 Android phones are activated. Gartner Research projects internet-capable mobile devices will outnumber PCs by 2013. We need a culture shift in instruction in order to prepare our students for the 21st century. Our journey takes us down the BYOT road. Notice the graph here. It's just a picture of the numbers of devices that are connecting, the, the numbers of mobile devices that are connecting to our district network around the district. The point I want to make here is, is notice how it increased significantly at school startup around 819, 820, and then 821, you can see the numbers of wireless devices really increased when teachers, teachers arrived back and then also when students arrived. Uh, August the 21st, you can see uh, connectivity spiked up on that day. Here we want to take the opportunity to address some questions you might have. What does BYOD or BYOT stand for? Bring your own device or bring your own technology. We've decided to call it Bring Your Own Technology because we want the process to include more than just the device. We want it to include the device and how it would be used in the classroom, uh, what resources we might use, what are its capabilities. The T might be a laptop, it might be a tablet, netbook, iPad, iPod Touch, it might be a smartphone, it might be resources associated with the device. Some challenges that we know we're going to have to face are going to be uh, challenges related to equity. Um, w as a committee, we're going to have to look at that even in the pilot phase to see how we respond to that and deal with that. It might be through school-issued devices that we address equity. It might be through what some are calling bring your own technology huddles, where groups of students huddle around those that have the devices. Um, we recognize professional development is going to be key to success here. Uh, it's going to need to be a part of the process, obviously. Um, costs are going to be a need to be identified early on in the pilot process, and that means the expectations, um, all the needs, all that's going to need to be identified in the pilot process so that we can clearly understand what the needs are so that we can build the systems to support the way that we intend to use the bring your own technology model. I think it's also important that we, as we tightly integrate the technology into the classroom process, that we think in terms of funding, funding annually uh, for, the, for the overall project um, as we think about its importance as it's tightly integrated to the, to the classroom process. We want to allow access while holding adults accountable. In the past, teachers did not have access to third-party email or social networking sites. We want to open access for all teachers to many legitimate, powerful, and valuable tools. We will need to educate our teachers, parents, and students with regards to the policy and procedures. We must make digital citizenship a priority. We will shift from students hiding their device under their coats or in their pockets to having the device on top of the desk ready to be used as a learning tool in the 21st century classroom. 
For our pilot, we will be working with Centerville, McLees, New Prospect, Varennes, North Point, all the middle schools, and both high schools, including the career campus, beginning in October through the end of the year. We will conduct parent forums mid-September at each of these schools. We will review our pilot at the end of the year, conducting parent, teacher, and student surveys and collecting data. We will also be conducting professional development, focusing on BYOT strategies. We will have full implementation in the 2013-2014 school year for the district. So let's take a look at the timeline as it relates to the Bring Your Own Technology project. In preparation of our Bring Your Own Technology pilot, the first thing we've got to do is adopt a waiver that helps our piloting schools waive the existing policy that are preventing Bring Your Own Technology from actually occurring. Then from October to February the 1st, 2013, we would like to conduct the analysis phase, and then this phase will be utilizing our piloting schools and classrooms to gather information, identify needs, identify expectations, identify any limitations we might be experiencing, identify strategies, identify the mobile devices to be used, identify all the policies that need to be addressed and the changes that need to be made, identify any support infrastructure needs that need to be made, and come away from the analysis phase prepared to submit a request for proposal. Then from February the 2nd, 2013 to March the 19th, 2013, we'll consider that to be our development design phase. And it's in this phase that we will evaluate proposals submitted in response to our request for proposal. We'll seek funding and approval and then finally notify the vendor that was successful. From March 20th until May 15th, 2013, we'll consider this our implementation phase. Assuming we have obtained approval to proceed, this phase will be actually purchasing the system and, and beginning the system installation. As we start school in August 2013, we'll actually begin rolling out the installation starting with high schools first. From August through September 2013, then the middle schools through October or from October through December 2013 and then finally our elementary schools from January through February 2014. At the end of the 2013-2014 school year we would we would like to take the opportunity to evaluate where we are, where things are going well, where we might need to improve and we'll treat this as our learning analytics point as we begin to think about improving for the 2014-15 school year. You can see here our journey and vision continues to seek additional access opportunities for our 21st century learners. You've seen our journey from the past to the present and our vision for the future. We want to transform our classrooms by creating an environment that matches the 21st century learner.